everyone, I'm Tori and today's video is day three in the 12 Days of Knitmas series. That's right, there's a whole series. In this series, we take a look at different easy and customizable gifts using the circular knitting machine, specifically Centro, but it can translate to Addy and others as well. So today's project is going to be for the fashionista in your life and it will be this beautiful hooded cowl. I mean, come on. I'm a little obsessed and I'm going to be making it in multiple colors. It is a longer project. So one thing I will say before we dive right into the tutorial is this project right here took me about four hours over the course of two days with my day job and other things in there. Um, and there are a little bit more of advanced techniques involved with this one. Not really, you know, the beginner can absolutely do this project. Let's just say that. But there are different ways that you can add more to it and you can customize it and you can make it as advanced as you want it to be or as basic as you want it to be. Uh, really, we're working with three tubes. That's it. That's literally this project is three tubes. Um, and so let's just dive in to the tutorial. Hopefully you like this. Don't forget to subscribe to get notifications for the others in this series. There are many more videos to come. Um, also in the comments, let me know if there's a project that you want to challenge me to see if I can create because I love a challenge, um, or if there's just anything in general that you have questions on, uh, by all means, pop those down below. So without further ado, let's get into the tutorial and make this amazing hooded cowl. All right, the supplies we will need for this project, we are gonna be using the Centro 48 pin, and we are gonna be using it on just the tube setting. So that's good news because the tubes are so much easier to make than panel, um, in my personal opinion. Of course, you'll need yarn. I actually use this Pound of Love from Lion Brand. It works so well in the knitting machine. Honestly, I never have any problems with it. And this I think is called Winter Green, if I can find the color here, but it is in Winter Green. Also for this project, um, you will need buttons. Uh, I recommend, I used three, but I might use four next time. Um, in fact, I might even alter it and add four, but it's up to you, whatever the look you want. You can even just add one and have it more of kind of an open collar. So um, you will need at least some buttons. Crochet hooks so that you can finish the ends and make them really nice and clean. Also, you'll need a needle to uh, put your buttons on. Your scissors, of course. Uh, I do recommend using stitch markers of some kind. You do not have to use fancy stitch, mar stitch markers like this. You can just use like um, bobby pins work, but anything that you can use, even um, extra yarn, just to keep your rows straight because you don't want a twisted project. So these are all the tools that you will need for this project. So not very many tools, but let's just dive in to what we need next. One of the longest parts of this project is knitting the tube. So we need three tubes, two 110 rows, and then one 118 rows. And you're also gonna use waist yarn for casting on and casting off of all three tubes. Next, we're gonna finish all of the edges with a crochet finish. So you're gonna line up your tubes in half so they don't twist. And then you're gonna take your crochet hook, go in one side and then up to the top and pull through, go to the bottom and pull through and you're gonna do that all the way across until you get to the end and then you'll remove the waist yarn. All of your tube ends should have a really nice clean finish just like this. All three tubes should now be closed and finished on the ends and you're gonna line them up just like this. The next step is to connect or graft all three of these pieces together. To prevent any sort of twisting, you do wanna make sure that you use the same line or the same row of stitches when connecting each piece together. You'll also want to keep it in place with something. I use actual um, stitch markers, but as I mentioned before, you could use bobby pins or pieces of yarn, whatever you have around the house, but you definitely want to make sure that they stay in place so as you stitch along, it doesn't move and shift around. For this project, I used a mattress stitch to connect the panels together. And to do that, you just go through one loop on one side, through the loop on the other. I would recommend going slowly on this point and turning it on the other side because the other side is the right side. Um, I went really quickly because I wanted to wear it and I was in a hurry and I didn't really care for how the other side turned out and I'm probably gonna redo it. But take your time and just do that little mattress stitch there to connect the pieces. 
When you get to the end of the row, simply uh, go through a couple times just to make sure that it's secure since it's the end and then make a knot. And then you can either weave in your yarn tails now or you can do it later. It really is just a personal preference on how you prefer to work. Once you're finished grafting all three pieces together, this is the wrong side by the way, you're gonna actually take it and flip it over so the wrong side is facing down. We wanna see the right side up. Here you can see where those grafts don't look as perfect as I want them to. Um, and then just fold it in half and then we're gonna stitch the top together and that's actually gonna give us that hooded piece. So once again, I use those stitch markers just to align the rows together. And then I did a combination of mattress stitch as well as just going around a few times. Um, this one, again, I just wanted to get this hood piece done, um, but definitely go a little bit slower and double check the other side just to make sure that you're not catching any extra stitches and then it looks the way you want it to. Now the next step is to add our buttons and our loops. It's nearing the end of the project, so it's super exciting. Uh, so you wanna make sure that you put those buttons, lay them out how you want them. I did three, I might do four next time. It really is up to you. And then mark on your garment where you want your loops to go because we are actually gonna crochet loops on. You could also just use a ribbon or any other piping that you wanted to use to add those loops. Um, again, get creative. So then I'm just gonna do here, um, I ended up using just single crochet and doing uh, about eight different um, chains and then going back into the garment itself. And then that gave me a pretty loose loop. Um, again, I would probably do about five crochet loops next time, um, but I did that for each of the three loops down the project and then I finished it off by tying a knot and then weaving in the tails. To attach the buttons, I just aligned them on the garment and then I just used a single needle and yarn um, because I wanted to have that green pop uh, through the button itself. So I just used um, one over and one over creating the X and then I tied a knot in the back and then tucked the tails. I would say for that top button, if you are going to wear this um, using the buttons as structural, I would say make sure to maybe go over a few times on that one just so that it doesn't pop off. Now as an extra finish, you can also uh, straighten out the hood if you don't like the point. Um, if you like the point, you can actually add a pom-pom on there, but the easiest way to do this is on the inside, you can actually just do take a darning needle and one single piece of yarn and just stitch across and tie it off and tuck it. That's all I did, and then I ended up with this a little bit of a flatter hood, and I like the look so much better. So again, this is one of those projects that you can plan out over you know, the course of a week, or you can work on it when you get time to work on it. Um, the, the hardest part is all the tedious parts with you know hand connecting and grafting the pieces together, but you can get creative, add different colored buttons, you can add fringe, you can, um, you know, do different color panels, make it like a color block thing, stripes. I mean, get super creative with this project. I want to see what you create. So if you do create this project, uh, make sure to tag Girly Girl Style on social media, and I would love to see what you've created. So that's it for today. Again, stay tuned for the next episode, which I think we're going to be looking at... <laughs> these, and I just kicked the camera. These right here, one of my new favorite obsessions, um, decorating naked bottles, because who wouldn't want to do that? So I have a bunch of these that I've made, and that I think is going to be the next in the series. So until next time, everybody, see ya!